Hey guys, Miss Marusic here, and in this video, we're going to talk about weak acid and base calculations, but with some variations than what we saw in our previous video. Uh, for example, one of those variations that we could see is in the type of information that they give us in order to solve the problem. Uh, sometimes instead of Ka or Kb directly given to us, we are instead given data about the pKa or the pKb. And just like our other p quantity scales like pH and POH, these are based off of logarithmic formulas. And what's convenient is that the logarithmic formulas are given to us on our formula chart. So just like we saw pH and POH given to us with the negative log of our ions, we see down here that pKa is the negative log of Ka, and the pKb is the negative log of Kb. So those equations are given to us. But remember, College Board expects us to know how to undo a negative base 10 logarithm. And so they don't give us the formulas to undo those logarithms. And so we have to remember that to basically solve for the Ka or Kb being given the p quantity value, we would need to do 10 to the negative pKa to solve the Ka or the 10 to the negative pKb to solve the Kb. So keep in mind, just like with pH and pOH, the 10 to the negative power is not given to us on the formula chart. Now, one other kind of interesting thing is that sometimes in a problem, they will talk about a conjugate acid-base pair, either the acid with its conjugate base or the base with its conjugate acid. And so while they might give us data for the conjugate, they may not give us the data directly for the acid or base that we're trying to deal with. And so we need to use some relationships that exist between the Ka of our acid and the Kb of our base within one of those conjugate pairs. Now, this formula right here is on your formula chart. So if you go find where we talked about Kw equaling the hydrogen ion times the hydroxide ion equaling 1 times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius, remember if temperature changes, then that number is different, we notice that the Kw is also equal to the Ka times the Kb. And again, that is referring to the acid and base within a conjugate pair. So if we know, say, the Ka value, and we're trying to get the conjugate base's Kb value, we can utilize this equation along with our 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Now, obviously, that is only true at 25 degrees Celsius. So unless otherwise stated, we are assuming that we're at standard ambient temperature conditions. And so we would assume that we're at 25 degrees Celsius. However, just like we saw with pH and pOH, there is a relationship also between pKa and pKb. Uh, because that power here is that negative 14th, if I look at the absolute value of that 14, that would represent the maximum number that those two p values would add up to. And so just like with pH and pOH, we can utilize that to help us. Um, however, keep in mind that this guy is actually not on the formula chart. So you may want to have that kind of tucked in your memory as one of the formulas that you're allowed to use. So with all that said, let's look at an example here. It gives us that sodium cyanide dissociates to form the sodium ion and the weak base cyanide, CN negative 1. And it says here that the cyanide ion is the conjugate base of hydrocyanic acid, HCN, which has a pKa value of 9.21. And what it wants us to do is to solve the pH and percent ionization of a particular molarity solution of NaCN. And to start off with, that kind of sounds like the same problems we've been solving. They're asking us about a pH and a percent ionization. So I know what I would want to do is first come up with some sort of rice table because I know that this is going to be weak. This is very clearly telling us that that CN is a weak base. Now, 
when I wrote my reaction here, you notice I did not include the sodium plus one ion, and that is because it's a spectator. I want to address this weak base CN negative one and what it would do in a water solution. So just like I did on the previous problems, I put it with liquid water. I made an equilibrium. If it's a weak base, I know I have to make hydroxide. And let's think about how we would get that. I would know that the base would end up accepting a proton. It's going to steal that H plus from the water. That's what leaves behind the OH. And so therefore, my base would end up creating the conjugate acid of HCN. And so then I would continue to fill out my rice table. They told me that my NACN was 1.55 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity. Since there's one CN in the solution, I would assume that it would have the same concentration as the overall compound due to that 1 to 1 molar ratio there. Initially, I would have no hydroxide and no HCN. I would exclude the H2O from my calculation as it's a pure liquid. I know that the CN is going to lose some X and the OH is going to gain some X as well as the HCN. So you can see my rice table looks exactly like the problems we just did in the previous video. No different. However, let's think now what we would want to do next. Eventually, I want to get to pH, which means eventually I need to know what this hydroxide ion concentration is because if I have OH, then I can get to pH. Um, so that means I'm going to need to solve X. And so I'm going to need to solve X by utilizing equilibrium expressions. Well, this is a weak base. So that means I should be utilizing a KB expression. So I kind of need a KB value. And if I read through here, I notice that they don't give us a KB value directly. So in order to get that KB value, I'm going to have to use some other information that they give us. So with that said, what I first did is I then wrote my KB expression, my two products, over my reactant, again, all raised to their coefficients, but here we assume them all to be one. But in order to solve this, I need a KB value. Well, look what they give us. They don't give us KB, but they tell us that the hydrocyanic acid HCN, which is the conjugate, has a pKa value of 9.21. So since I have a conjugate pair here, I'm going to be allowed to utilize these equations here in order to solve that KB value. Now you do have a couple options here. Obviously you could use the pKa to solve the Ka and then plug in that Ka here with 1 times 10 to the negative 14th and solve KB. Would that work? Absolutely. However, I find it a little bit easier to use this other equation here. If I know that the pKa is 9.21, that means 9.21 plus my pKb would equal 14. And so that's the way that I chose to work this problem. So what I did is I said, hey, we need that Kb value. pKa plus pKb equals 14. So if I do 14 minus my pKa of 9.21, that would get me the pKb of the conjugate of that cyanide ion is 4.79. So now that I have the pKb, now I can solve the Kb by utilizing 10 to the negative pKb equals the KB. And so that ended up getting me my KB value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth for that cyanide ion. Now here's the deal. Now that I have KB, this problem works exactly like the problems we did in our last video. I can now use that KB value in here along with my equilibrium expression by utilizing all the values in my rice table. Just like before, this KB is incredibly small, so I get to ignore the minus X. I would then work to solve X. I see that X is 5.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. I would then come up back to my rice table and ask myself, well, what does X represent? And X represents the HCN concentration, but more importantly for us, it represents the hydroxide ion concentration. So once I now know 
that my hydroxide ion concentration is 5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now I can take the negative log of that to get the pOH, and then that gets me 3.30 for the pOH. To get to the pH, I would simply subtract that value from 14. That gets me a pH of 10.70. So then I would want to ask myself, well, does this answer make sense? Well, I was trying to solve the pH of a weak base CN1. Does 10.70 make sense for the pH of a weak base? And yes, it does, because that pH is above 7. It's above neutral, and so therefore that would be okay for a base. And so then I can solve the percent ionization just like we did in the previous video. And so I would do my hydroxide ion concentration over my base. So that's that 5 times 10 to the negative 4th over the original base concentration, 1.55 times 10 to the negative 2. I would multiply it by 100 to get into a percent, and that gets me a percent ionization of 3.2%, which makes sense. It's pretty small, and we would expect to see a small percent ionization for a weak base. So you notice this problem worked exactly like all of the problems we did on the previous video. The only difference was is that I first needed to figure out what this KB value was. So this work I did right here was kind of the new component for this problem. I had to use the conjugates pKa in order to get the KB of my weak base. All right, let's go ahead and look at two other examples on the next page of some other quirks we could see with these weak acid and base problems. So on this one, if I read through it, it mentions that we have this crazy acid, trichloroacetic, isn't that a mouthful? Um, and they, here they give us the pH of a molarity solution, and they want us to solve the Ka value. So instead of using Ka to find pH, here we have pH, and we're trying to get back to Ka. Um, so again, utilizing a rise table, utilizing some of the same equations we did before, we're just kind of working backwards through our rice table. So on setting up my rice table, the first thing I would have done is I would have written my reaction. Now you notice this acid is kind of weird because it does show the H at the end. Um, the reason why they've done that is sometimes on these organic acids, they write them in kind of an unusual order to address a little bit more information about what the structure looks like. So to an organic chemist, writing it in this particular order makes perfect sense. However, here's the key. We know that this is an acid. They're asking us for Ka. So we know that we have to make hydronium here. We know that this has to lose that H plus because that is what Bronsted Lowry said an acid is going to do. And so what that means is my H2O here is behaving as that base in accepting that H plus ion. So once it loses that H, we end up making this CCL3COO negative one ion. Now, initially, all I know is that I have the 0.5 molar solution of trichloroacetic, none of the hydronium, and none of this other crazy ion. I really don't know anything else about my rice table at that point. What I have to do is I have to use some of this other information that they give me in order to continue plugging into this rice table. I see that they mention here that the pH is 1.398, which makes sense for a weak acid that we see a pH that is below 7. And so we need to use this pH to get to that hydronium ion. So what I would do is I would do 10 to the negative pH and that would get me my hydronium ion concentration. So I did 10 to the negative 1.398. That gets a value of 0 0.04 molarity. Now, as far as sig figs are concerned, this um, pH had three places past the decimal, so I included three sig figs here with my molarity. And so then I said, hey, that is the equilibrium concentration of my hydronium ion. So now that I know that, I can use that information to go and figure out some of these other pieces. For example, I know that there's a one-to-one -one ratio between these two guys. 
So they must have both gone up by 0 0.04 if they started at zero initially. Um, I also know that if these went up by 0 0.04, that this original acid must have went down by 0 0.04. And so when I do that subtraction, that would get me 0 0.460 molarity for that trichloroacetic acid. So now that I have all of these equilibrium concentrations, I can now plug that in to a Ka expression and actually calculate what the value of Ka would be. You see here it ends up being 0 0.00348. You could also report it as 3.48 times 10 in the negative third, which is a little bit larger Ka than we see sometimes with other um, common weak acids that we deal with. All right, we're going to look at one more problem here. And on this problem, we are again going to have some variant on this calculating with weak acids and bases. Um, on this one, they give us the pH of a weak base solution of morphine. They tell us that that value is 9.25. Um, but we want to solve what was the original concentration of morphine in the solution. Um, so basically, we're going to, again, kind of work backwards through our rice table to get back to that initial concentration. And to help us, they have also given us that the pKb of morphine is 5.796. So again, kind of another quirk here, because instead of giving us Kb directly, they've instead given us the pKb. So the first thing I would do is start to set up my rice table. I know that this is a weak base, and so I know I'm going to do an equilibrium expression. So I know I need that rice table here. And so I start with my morphine, and I know for that weak base, I need to add that water in there. I would have my two-way arrow for my equilibrium. Now, I know for a weak base, I should be making hydroxide ion. Bases should make hydroxide, acids should make hydronium. And so I want to think about how it would get that hydroxide ion there. And so kind of going back to here, I know if I have a weak base, that that means that the water must have given an H plus to my weak base so it can accept an H plus. And so that gives us C17H19NO3 with the H plus one tacked onto the end. And so what was left off the water once it donated that H plus would be the remaining hydroxide ion. So that's how we're going to get that hydroxide ion produced here. Um, initially, I would have an unknown value for that weak base. I don't know what it is to begin with, but I know my two ions initially before I ionize would both be zero here. Now, at that point, I can't really fill out any more of this rice table. I don't know any more information directly. I'm going to have to do some calculations to continue filling out that table. And so one of the things that I noticed they give me is, just like on the previous problem, they give us the P pH value. And so I know if I have that the pH is 9.25, I can use that to solve my hydroxide ion concentration. The problem is, of course, I don't have one singular formula to go straight from pH to hydroxide ion concentration. So I first had to use pH plus pOH equals 14. So I did 14 minus 9.25 to get 4.75, which is my pOH. And then I said, hey, hydroxide ion would be 10 to the negative pOH. So what that would mean is that I would do 10 to the negative 4.75 in order to get my hydroxide ion concentration that would go in my rice table for hydroxide. So at equilibrium, my hydroxide should be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Once I have that value, I can now continue to kind of solve some other components on this table. I know that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between these two ions, and they should have both increased by the same amount, and so they should both be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. However, back over here, if these gained that 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, our base must have lost that 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so what that means is that at equilibrium, my morphine should be x minus that 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So now that I know all that information, I can kind of start to plug into my KB expression. So the next thing I did is I wrote my KB expression here, my hydroxide and my complex ion over the original morphine here, all raised to the exponent of one because they all have coefficients of one. But the problem is, is that even though I know what goes into the rest of these pieces here, I still need what I need to plug in 
for KB, but they didn't give me KB directly. So kind of like we did earlier, if they don't give me KB, then I've got to use this PKB in order to get KB. And so that's where I would use that KB is equal to 10 to the negative PKB. So I did 10 to the negative 5.796. And if you want to go ahead and solve a number for that and plug it in, you could. But I just left that as what I plugged in for KB. That would equal my 1.8 times 10 negative fifth squared for my hydroxide and my complex ion over my morphine, which was x minus 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now here's where you got to get a little bit creative on your algebra. Obviously, I want to solve this x, but right now it is in the denominator, which is a terrible place for it. So in order to get it into the numerator, I would multiply it up. Well, I want to start to get that x by itself. So this 10 to the negative 5.796, I would want to bring down over here. I would want to divide both sides by that number. So if you notice, basically what I did is I flip-flopped the position of these two terms. I brought the x minus 1.8 times 10 to get a fifth to the top on the other side. And I brought the 10 to the negative 5.796 to the bottom on the opposite side. And so that kind of simplified my algebra a little bit. I could do all of this math here and get an answer. And then to get x by itself, I would want to add over the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so you can kind of see I've set that up here on what I would plug into my calculator. Once I plug all of that in, that ends up getting a value of 2.2 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. Now, reminder, we were trying to solve x. We were trying to solve what this original concentration of morphine is. And so therefore, this value here, 2.2 times 10 negative fourth, would be my concentration of morphine that I had to start off with. All right, so again, same kind of idea of the problems we've been solving earlier. It's just now we're kind of working in the opposite direction in order to solve that original concentration of the base. All right, I hope you're feeling good about performing some of these calculations. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.